last week we talked about endogenic processes and um, what's the other one? Plate tectonics, Clock where we learned that in plate tectonics, we learned that there are three types of boundaries or three kinds of boundaries. You have your um, convergent, divergent, and transform boundaries. And all of these boundaries, they have physical manifestations of this. It can actually, or these can actually be seen in the terrain of our planet. No, So that's it. So let us begin with geologic time. All right, so actually when we talk about this, uh, if we talk about this chapter, it actually talks about how rocks are, uh, we, uh, how we, uh, kita, are able to um, surmise the age of our planet or the age of a specific place based on the rocks no? and the fossils that are found within. And then um, let's uh, talk about fossils. What exactly are fossils? They are remains of organisms that lived prior to the last glacial period about 10,000 years ago. So, kining uh, fossils, no? I think you know what fossils are. Remains na siya. Okay. Um, say nga bilin sa mga patay na mga plants or animals a long, long time ago. So, uh, how do your fossils form? They are usually formed like this. So daily like it, it's not really like a like all kinds of fossils are made in this same step by step process. It's not always consistent, but in a sense in Anisha. So for example, namatay ang sa organism, and as time goes by, na coveran siya ogdanghang sediments on top of it, and because of that weight, you know, because of the weight of the sediments, your dead body will sink and then eventually mapress na siya dito sa ilawom, no? So, the sediments become rock and then the skeleton will be pressed and right after that, the earth's movements raise the layers of the rocks to the surface. So, so before that, na ay kana mineral activity, rocks will then be imprinting um, based on the remains, may it be like skeletons or on some of whatever it is. And then right after that, the rock erodes, if exposing the fossil. Now this depends. No, sometimes this could be done by uh, human activity. So. As you can see, kana mga geologists nato, those uh, anthropologists kana sila they purposely dig out these sites for fossils. Now, uh, stratification. This is uh, your sedimentary rocks forming layers, no? So stratified ang iyahang, ang um, iyahang formation. So this stratification actually tells you that these uh, rock layers have uh, aged, no? So lahi ni siyang time. Um, for example, lahit niya time, then lahit niya nga time na forma, then lahit niya nga time na forma on, on the top. So it depends on the layer and the composition of the layer as well. All right, so that's stratification. Now we will look at the several principles that um, have been established to determine the relative age of rock layers. Now, the first law is the law of original horizontality. It says here that this law states that sediments are generally deposited horizontally, not vertically. Vertically as in pataas, di ba? So, pahigda dyan na siya. That's the first rule. The second is the law of lateral continuity. It says here that layers of sediment spread out in all directions until they thin out at the edge of the de depositional basin or grade into a different kind of sediment. So, mura ka pa siya tubig, no? It will try to fill up this part pa, ay hindi na siya mag-accumulate elsewhere. So that is lateral continuity. The next is the law of superimposition, which states that sediments are generally deposited horizontally and the lowest, it will uh, it will make sense na yun nga, kung unsa ang naas, unsa nga layer ang nasa pinakaubos, this will be your oldest layer. Kung unsa yung naasa pinakataas, that will be your youngest layer so it would make sense that this layer that is colored green would be your oldest layer and then the layer that is colored purple will be your youngest layer 
And lastly, we have the principle of cross-cutting relationship, which states that geologic features that cut across rocks are younger than the rocks which they cut through. So this particular uh, red layer right there, this is what you call as an intrusion. So this word right here, an intrusion. So pangalan palang intrusion as in it's trying to cut into that of the layers. That's intrusion. There's another, uh, there is another concept there that's extrusion. No? An extrusion is um, a disturbance in the rock layers. So may it be from a volcanic, uh, source or a magmatic source or plutonic source, meaning it could be, uh, it, is, uh, it, it is an igneous rock layer that is, of course, made up of either magma or lava. So that is your cross-cutting relationship. So if you have your PDF files with you, you can just refer to these principles and then uh, you will know this, Nadayan. So these are other examples. No, So in this example right here, uh, in the first one, this is the first example. Layer G, this one right here, is the oldest layer. And then, of course, we know that the topmost layer would then be the youngest. Now, the second one is, Bahala na naka crater ang imhong layers of rocks, na kuan siya, na buslutan siya, no? When they match up, they will be in the same. Uh, it is understandable that they will be in the same layer a long time ago. But then again, there might be like a lot of reasons why this happens. So it really depends. And then next is some of your rocks will tilt. It depends on the pressure. No, once upon a time, horizontal, na I pressure dayon na push sa iya or kanang na abay earthquake na nahita bore unsa ba so mahiwi ang imhang rock layer so maginana siya. But it will still follow the same thing. What was topmost before will still be the youngest rock. Bahalag nagkatil siya. And lastly, this concept right here. When there is an intrusion, na ay kanang nag try o insert sa layers ni mo. Your intrusion will be the youngest layer uh, as long as uh, yeah, it, this intrusion will be younger than these layers right here. But the layer at the top will be still the youngest, okay? So again, the intrusion here will be younger than the layers that are found uh, where it is intruding. Oh, kung asa siya insert siya ang pinakabata. Uh -oh. Uh, then, Canada yung wala niya na touch sa imuhang intrusion, uh, younger na sa iyaha. So, let's uh, look at some examples here. Ayan. So, you have here layers um, Q, P, O, N, M, L, H, I, J, K. That's it. Again, you have an, you have an intrusion here that's letter P. Ayan. Okay? Do not forget that. Now, I have a question for you. In the chat box, kindly write the answer, okay? So my first question is, which layer is younger? Is it layer Q or intrusion P? Is it Q or P? Which is younger? Okay. Bantay lang bin bantay lang din ng opya ha. Pwede mawopya. Charot lang. All right. Aman ang uban. So a lot of you are saying it's intrusion P. Okay. That is actually correct. No, it is P. Intrusion P is younger than that of layer Q. All right. Another question. Which is younger? Intrusion P or layer L? P or L? <laughs> oh my God, ang upira sila. Okay. Sure, dito mo sa inyo answer. Which is younger, intrusion P or layer L? Okay, tanawa ni siya ha. Di ba ang principle na to is, Ang imong intuition P is younger than that of the layers that it encompasses. No, yahang 
gi koan uh, yah hanggi intrudan so in this case gi in, nag intrude ba siya sa layer L nalampas ba siya yes nalampas siya no therefore kinsa younger nila P or si L Say final answer P. Oh, yeah. So it's really P. Okay. Another another um question. Which is older? Older na sada. Which is older? Layer H or intrusion P? Which is older? Intrusion uh, H or intrusion P? Uy, Layla, isang answer mo na kung ganahan. PH, PH, ma'am, kay wala man nilapas ang P sa H layer. Okay. But, do you remember, do you remember what I said kaganina? The topmost layers, katong naa sa taas, they are young, younger than that of the layers below. Di ba? The topmost, uh, topmost layers are younger than the uh, layers below that. Okay, so na na siya. So, kung sa may tinuod, which is older, H or P? Anong totoo? So, it is P. Very good. Okay? Ilawo man si P kang H, right? Ilawo man siya. So, mean that P would be older than that of layer H. Ayan. Okay. How about this one? Naata gi introduce diri nga thing which is your fault no money siya ang fault this is a fault it will follow the same principle as your intrusion same gi hapon na principle meaning kung asa siya taman dalha siya younger okay da siya younger okay so ay sorry so let's uh let's ask younger which is younger fault age or layer C. H or C. Which is younger? Na yung answer letter E. Okay, again. Ang fault ni mo, it will follow the same rule as that of your intrusion. Wherein, kung asa siya ng lampas, or kung asa siya taman, it is younger than that of the layers that it affects, no? So, in this case, which is younger, H or C? <sighs> ha? Is that, tanawa ang H. Tanawa ang H, tanawa ang H. Asa siya taman? Asa siya taman? Di ba taman siya kang C? Taman siya kang C, right? So that would mean, that fault H occurred earlier. I occurred earlier, sorry. Fault H will be younger than layer C. Nga naman, kay kung, kung, kung mas young pa si layer C, uh, dapat wala na na crack, di ba? Kay crack ba ending fault? That's a crack. So that would mean H will be younger than C. Nagets ninyo? Did you get it? Nagets ninyo? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. Kung younger pa na si layer C, wala o ta siya na-crack. Diba? So, na-crack man siya. O, na-appeal man siya sa crack ni fault H. Yan. Alright. Another. Uh, which is younger? Younger yet pa ni. Intrusion A or layer j a or j which is younger intrusion a or layer j cast your votes text <laughs> text intrusion a to 8080 just kidding hala ka ganahan ko kay lay Talawa ang intrusion A. Aha, siya taman. Aha, siya taman. Sa J, ma'am. Taman siya sa J. That would mean, 
remember, ang intrusion is younger than the layers that it is affecting. Dabi kita man Mrs. J. So, kisa mas bata nila. Kisa mas bata si A or si J. What do you think? Kinsa younger? Mm. Si A or si J? Hello? Hala, J, yun lang answer. Okay, again ha. Ang rules sa intrusion, Sky, kung asa taman si intrusion, that would mean it will be younger than the layers na naapektuhan ni intrusion. So, kinsay na covera ni intrusion? Si layer E, layer J, layer L, layer C, layer D, layer J. Diba? Daan siya taman. Daan siya taman. So, kinsa may mas bata sa ila? Si A or si J? Ay, nilapas daw sa J. A, ma'am. Oo. So, it is letter A. Intrusion A ang younger. Ayan, nana siya ha. Mas ako naagalito, inana ang situations. Kung asa siya taman, younger dyan siya dito. Ayan. But which is the youngest? Which is the youngest layer? Among all the layers. Ang siya pinaka young. Layer H? Layer H? Fault H? Ang siya pinaka bata. Pinakabata. Nara siya, o? F, ma'am. Si layer F. Ayan. So, siya, pinakabata. Alright. So, let's go here. Okay. So, let's try to arrange now this, kwando uh, bis, arrangement of fossil formation. So, um, according to this, uh, arrange the events of fossil formation numbers where one is the first event to happen. So, what do you think is one? So, ato ni siyang ikwana letter, ha? This is A, B, C, D, E, and F. Which do you think is the first thing na may tabo? B, ma'am. Letter B, very good. Mamatay sa, un sa una. Okay? Mamatay sa una ang organism. Okay, what what's the next one? What's the next one? What do you think? A, ma'am. E? A. Okay. A or E? A. A? Wala pa may sediment, di ba? Nabatay lang ang ang kuan, organism. Dabi, wala pa may sediment. A, ma'am. E. Okay, E. Okay, very good. Okay, what's next? What's next? So, nabutangan siya sediments. Tungod sa kabug at sa sediments, sa mahita sa fossil? Sa mahita buo sa koan? Sa organism? Dead organism? A, ma'am. A, ma'am. A, ma'am. A, ma'am. A, ma'am. A, ma'am. A, Musink sa siya. It will sink. Okay. Musink sa siya. Nabi kayo, makompact man. Makompact man siya. What will happen? Makompact ang yung mga... Hmm? It's letter A. A. All right. Okay. A. And there'll be okay. Now I change in the rock. C, there might be changes C. in the rock. Okay. Next one is C. Okay. C. And lastly, fossil C in the sedimentary rock. W, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D. Z. Oh, oh. So that will be the arrangement. So uh, this is not absolute because as I've said again, lahi lahi man ang fossils, no? Uh, dili man tanan fossils na bones or, or or like for example your plants, no? It will be hard for them to uh, like imprint because again, it's it's plant. It doesn't have bones. So But this is like the general general sequence of events. All right, so let's go here to um, relative and uniform dating. When you say relative dating, you're actually um, giving an age to a planet or to a place, but it does not really have like a, a number. 
No, that's relative dating. You can only use the sequence of rocks to do so. Just like what we've done kaganina, that's relative dating. Absolute dating, on the other hand, it will give you an exact number. So it's a uh, numerical data which uses um, radioactive decay. It uses radioactive decay, so it uses what you call as isotopes. No, these isotopes are basically um, unstable versions of your elements. So they, these unstable elements, they want to go back to being stable. So moanang they have this thing called uh, they they will degrade. No, they will or what you call as decay. And when they decay, you will observe what you call as half life, meaning how long does it take for that amount of that isotope to be in half na lang? Like for example, if you have like 500 milligrams of uranium, na tingali, saka uranium-238, inana, how long does it take for it to become 250 milligrams? So that is what you call your half-life. That is also seen in your medications. Like for example, you are um, you have a fever, and then you a doctor, and then the doctor said, nga, "Oh, you have to take paracetamol. Paracetamol like five hundred milligrams of paracetamol, and then you have to take five hundred milligrams of paracetamol um, every four hours." Now, why is it that every four hours man mo take? It's because four hours is the half life of paracetamol. Dili man pwede nga mag take mo paracetamol nga kanang ano na wala na yung paracetamol sa imuhang dugo tapat na apa half palang ana no so that is half life so we know that through experiments actually so it is like this so for example na akay during the start of um yeah during the start of uh, your uh, this particular amount of uranium no uh after ang iha don't half life it takes 250,000 years for half of the radioactive uranium to become stable lead so pagka half aninya half aninya uh it would take 250,000 years now it would take another 250,000 years for that half to become half okay let's say for example 500 grams na siya. So, kining sa first half-life, may mo siyang 250 grams. Ana. Then, sa second half-life niya, which is the half of 250, that's 125 grams. No? And then, next up, uh, kung ano siya, sa iyang third nga half-life, you have 125 um, grams. Half, ana niya, what's half of of 125 i had to like divide it on my cell phone that is 62.5 grams so that is the concept of half-life all right let's try to answer this you don't have to read any apart huh? let's go here to using our knowledge in absolute dating for example you have uranium 238 now for it to become lead 206 it will take um, 4.5 billion years for it to be in half. Now, kalima na daw siya nag half life. Kalima na siya nag half life. So, how old now is a sample? What do you think? So, it's half life again, okay, 4.5 billion. So, kinido sa uranium 238, kalima daw siya nag half life. So, 4.5 billion years. Dayon another 4.5 billion years, then another nasa na 4.5 billion years, another nasa na 4.5 billion years, and then lastly, last na lang na billion years. So, how old now is uranium 238? What do you think? It's 18. 22. 22? Mm -mm. Where did you get that number? Kaning 22? 22.5? 22.5. Mm. Multiply na 4.5 kalima. Okay. I multiply na siya. Ayan. So, I multiply na siya kay kalima naman siya. So, I multiply na niyo siya. So, this will become the age of uranium 238 is 22.5 billion 
years. Ayan. Very good, everyone. How about uranium? I believe. Okay naman na. I think this is settled. Let's go to thorium-232. Okay. Thorium-232 has a half-life of 14.1 billion years. And the age of the sample now is 84.6 billion years. So, kapila di siya nag-half-life. How many times? What do you think? How many times did it go through its half-life? Okay. Ilea, how did you get six? How, how did you get six? G divide. All right. Very good. So basically, divide lang ni 84.6 divided by 14.1 billion years. So, kapila, kaya ang question man dili kay kapila siya nag half life. So, kapila siya nag 14.1. So, that's basically 84.6 divided by 14.1. You'll get six cycles of your half life. And our last example, last one ni has so rubidium. Rubidium 87. Uh, which will become strontium-87. What uh, takabalo pila yung half-life? But we know that kaupat na siya nag-cycle dahil 188 billion years yung edad. So, kapila man siya nag-half-life. Ay, kapila yung half-life. Uh, pila yung half-life. Forty-seven, ma'am. Forty-seven, ma'am. Forty-seven, okay. ma'am. Ma Two point one, ma'am. How did you get that answer, Langa? How did you get the answer? Divide the gap, ma'am. Divide the gap, on. Okay. So simple. Forty-seven billion years ayan so that's it but easy peasy lemon squeezy but of course um the way that we found this method and the way that we the scientists were able to determine the half-life of these um specimens no daily is so easy peasy <laughs> major complex siya. all right so um last one lang ni nato na concept no before we proceed to the reporting um uh, presenters, groups one and two, please prepare na ha. Okay, so in the, pro in the principle of fossil succession, it states that fossils succeed one another in a definite order and any time period can be recognized by the fossils present. I think that's very self-explanatory. Kung unsay na adan ha, mauna siyang time period or it's very specific to that. And it follows the principle of your index fossils. Index fossils uh, are basically... Um, distributed in a wide area and existed for limited time periods are the uh, <laughs> are called but so like for example Kanisha if you're going to look at these different layers no um ang ang pangitaw ni mo is unsa man tong fossil na nag-exist siya in this uh, exists siya constantly in this particular type of rock layer and rock consistency and rock composition. Like, same lang silang tanan. Ang mabili na anak would be these shells or these shells right here. So, kana lang. So, ang the others, dili pwede kay. Like, for example, kini siyang sample, makita ni mo din hi. So, uh, in different rock layers, mm -hmm, probably not it. So, that's not an index fossil at all. So, an index fossil, sa so, usalang siya ka layer makita. Therefore, um, you know. Uh, that this particular organism once existed in one specific era or eon or unsaba period. And that's it. We'll not talk about that anymore. Kinisha, I'll not talk about this because we talked about this kaganina. All right. So let's go here to um, Kinisha sa index fossil. You know that even though ang site 1 and site 2 are in two different locations. Like, for example, ang site 1 kay nari sa kagayan di Oro and site 2 is in Bukidon. But if ma-determine ni mo ang iyahang rock layers, no, and then the fossils that are found here 
are the same. Like, for example, kini siyang a fossil are same here. Therefore, they were once in the same layer sa una. Na. Or this one right here has the same layer as this one. So, uh, or has the same fossils uh, as this one. So, they existed in the same time period. Na yung nag-progress na nila differently because, again, they are in different locations. So, that is index fossil. So here are some examples of index fossils. We'll not talk about this because um, I will not get, get, like identify all index fossils. Okay, Nanesha. So we will check your understanding. There's an illustration here in your PDF if you're going to see it. Na illustration diri, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. So the first question is, what do you think is the kind of environment present when layers A and B were formed? Layers A and B, kinisila. What kind of environment uh, did the Earth have during that time? What do you think? Not really the Earth, but this location, this particular location. What do you think? What are the fossils in makita sa layer A and B? And then, what do you think was the environment then? Any answers? Ammonite, oh. mom. Yes, you have your ammonite, and then you have unsa pa man? Fish, mom. Trilobite. You have your fish, trilobite, and then your shell. Uh oh. So, what do you think was the environment during this time? So layers A and B. What do you think? Hmm. What do you think were the environment during this time? Saman. I'll give you two choices. Was it underground? Underwater? Above ground? What's the meaning? Underwater. Okay, underwater nisha nga time. Okay, because the fossils are sea creatures. Ayan. Okay, number two. Which is the oldest layer in site one? Uh oh, so the oldest layer in site one. What layer in site one? Hmm? What's the oldest layer in site one? The uh, A, mom A. Layer A. Okay, okay. So may pinaka ubus. Okay, so may pinaka ubus. So that will be like the oldest layer. Okay, number three. Which is the most recent layer on site two? Zima. Zima. Okay, that's layer Z. Okay, number four. Why do you think there are no available fossils in layers C and E? So nara ang C. Nara ang E. Ano wala kuno daw fossils din ha? Mom, soil and water. How did you... Uh -huh? Baby color. Ah, makakakuha na ang answer. <sighs> the, the color? Okay na, ay lava. Very good. It is an extrusion. Okay, so it's made of lava. So, kini solidified lava ni Nisha. Nga naman, mga nga wala fossils sa solidified lava. Wala may babuhi sa lava, kainit, mang kain na siya, no? So, wala, Dre. Oo, ma-melt yung organisms din, ha? So, that is an extrusion. Therefore, wala yung fossils to the na. It makes sense na wala yung fossils. Okay, and last question. What are the fossils present in layer F? Layer F. Nara ang layer F. Bird, dinosaur, and plant. Oh, so during this time, this location is what? Underwater? Underground? Above ground? What's the meaning? Above ground, ma'am. Above ground. Underground. It is already above ground. Underground? Huh? It's not underground. It's not the birds, no? It's not the birds. So this is above ground now. So if you have experience it, you can see it in your environment. All right. So that is it. Thank you very much. Uh, for this part, you just have to read this huh, on your own. Okay. Simple naman is it, no? On geologic time, this is uh, junior high concept. So you can just read this on your own. All right. So that will be it. Are there any questions uh, regarding geologic time?